Mike's Harder Cranberry Sauce is proud to present a King Waspinator joint. I want to cut the song to my girl, Michael Burnham. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh baby, you got that booty, that big booty. Oh how I love it, I love the booty. Mmm, Michael Burnham. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna grab it and stab it. I love it and fuck it. You heard that? It's right. I'm gonna tear the pants off all night, and then I'm gonna, gonna blast. I'm gonna blast Michael Burnham in her ass. Oh yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And when I bust a nut, it's gonna be in Michael Burnham's butt. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I know you like that. All night long. Mm, bringing the thunder. Team Waspinator. Mm, 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 mm. Good evening, Fandom Collective 1138. It is I, your old pal Waspinator. I figure not all of you might uh, catch on to exactly who Waspinator is. I, I'm, I'm not the most famous of Transformers, this is true. Um, I'm not like your, your, your Bumblebee. <sighs> Bumblebee, that old asshole. Or your Optimus Primes, or even your Star Screams. Although there at one point Star Scream did uh, possess my brain. Star Screams ghost from the future. But anyway, I, that's a long story, and I'll get to that. Anyway, I decided to uh, I guess uh, provide all of you with a, a brief history of Raspinator. Uh, a lot of this is actually canon, and uh, I mean, was, some of it's my little uh, side adventures that led me here to Fandom Collective 1138. Um, I guess really there's. Nothing else to do except start at the beginning. A uh, long, long, long time ago, there was this, a species called the Quintessons. And uh, it's believed they started off as, a, as an organic species, like, like the humans. But eventually they merged with their technology and uh, became ever and ever more arrogant and prideful with their creations and working on gigantic grand scales. And so they created a Unicron, the planet-devouring, transforming planet god thing that uh, totally uh, went rogue on them, uh, destroyed a whole lot of their stuff. And uh, in response, the Quintessons uh, that built another giant uh, planet. But this time, not intelligent or transforming, there was a gigantic factory, and there was a uh, named Cybertron. And uh, th the thing that the factory built was well, the Transformers, my kind. Um, they managed to drive Cybertron, I mean, uh, Unicron off, you know, after thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Transformers were thrown against it, destroying themselves, and Unicron itself wasn't killed. It just got tired and went away. But uh, 
during all this, uh, well, the Transformer called Megatronus uh, uh, rose to power, and uh, he managed to convince the Primes to join on on that side, and he started this whole big revolt. And uh, eventually, the Quintessons were driven off Cybertron, and uh, all seemed cool and peaceful for a very short amount of time, until uh, Megatron tried to uh, take power uh, over the Primes, and uh, they weren't very cool about that. And so the uh, great uh, civil war began between uh, the factions that ultimately would call themselves the Autobots and the Decepticons. I, I myself am a Predacon, we're, we're a sub-faction of the Decepticons, but I'm not really aligned with anybody anymore. That's a long story, we'll get to it. Anyway, the uh, civil war lasted for like over a million years or so, and uh, all the primes were killed except Optimus. He was the last one. And the uh, Decepticons had pretty much won everything on Cybertron. And Optimus Prime was going to uh, take some of his last Autobot soldiers and uh, go flee somewhere and uh, get some energy on and come back and try to try to retake the planet. But uh, Megatron got wind of this and followed him out on a ship and stormed it and took over. And uh, well, that's the whole story behind the Ark, which was depicted in the very first season of the original Transformers cartoon. You know, it crashed on Earth and they were all knocked out and were asleep for several million years. And uh, what Phil didn't know is uh, back on Cybertron uh, that another Decepticon rose up in power and he, he named himself Megatron, even though he wasn't actually Megatron. And he was the leader of the Predacons, and, or one of my leaders. And anyway, he came to Earth uh, searching for the Ark and he was followed by some uh, some Autobots who called themselves Maximals. And uh, that was that was the Beast Wars. And that's probably, if anyone recognizes me, that's probably what they recognized me from, was the Beast Wars show. Uh, you know, it ended with the Autobots winning and the Decepticons losing. And uh, the last thing I did was quit. I, I told Megatron to uh, take this job and shove it. And uh, I went off on my own way. And because of that, I was basically stranded on Earth for a long ass time. I uh, befriended these uh, the species of primitive hominids and I helped guide them along and help them evolve into, uh, what, well, well, you guys, you, you humans. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, that was me. Um, ta you know, it was around the time I taught you all about uh, building empires and big giant statues and writing and pyramids. Uh, Y'all were up and revolted on me. And I had to go flee for my life, and I hid out in the jungles of Southeast Asia. And uh, because I was alone, I decided to build some uh, other, some other transformers. And well, I didn't want to make more Decepticons or Predacons, so I, I, I invented the, the Insecticons. Uh, not just the ones you might know, like Kickback and Bombshell and Shrapnel. Uh, the ones that would join Megatron later on after the Ark reawoke in the 1980s. But I also made Scorpion Knock. And uh, actually, it was me who captured Arachnia and uh, turned her into Black Arachnia when she had uh, come back to Earth at one point to investigate uh, the doings on. Scorpionok led a revolt, and there was this whole Insecticon crisis. And basically, it's a secret beast war that no one really knows about except me. Uh, anyway, so let's see what happened after that. Uh, basically, I just hooked out in Southeast Asia for a long time. And then, like I said, in the 1980s, uh, an earthquake in Tennessee activated a volcano that reawakened the Ark and all the Autobots of the Decepticons woke up and hurrah, the, the, the Great Civil War was suddenly back and Cybertron got teleported next to Earth and you know, I was tired of being isolated and away from my people so I took the opportunity to, to go back to Cybertron and uh, join in the fun as the Autobot Decepticon Civil War was, was reignited and Shockwave was taken down off the throne and there was a bunch of back and forth between Megatron and eventually uh, Optimus was driven back to like the moons and there was a good city called Autobot City built on Earth that was helping support the Autobot cars and yada 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 uh, to, uh, Transformers the movie basically uh, Optimus dies, Megatron dies, and comes back as uh, Galvatron. Unicron shows up and he's destroyed by the Rod of his Prime. And things all seem pretty cool. There was a long, quiet time there in the 90s. Um, 
the Rodimus administration, you know, like tried to, to bring the, the Autobots and the Decepticons back together, but there's all these political rivalries and a couple plenty of things. Uh, during this time, uh, like in the mid 2000s, I want to say, like around the year 2005, that uh, Waspinator here uh, founded King Waspinator Radio. And uh, for several years, I was just like an entertainment venue. But then uh, Rodimus got deposed by Nemesis Prime. Uh, he called himself Optimus, and everyone thought it was Optimus Prime. I thought something was fishy because he looked weird. But anyway, he he calmed down tensions between uh, Earth and Cybertron, supposedly. And uh, that was the beginning of the Michael Bay crisis. Uh, all the Transformers, uh, who were tricked by Nemesis Prime, were taken to Earth and uh, were forced to uh, work in Michael Bay's movies. And many were destroyed and blown up for his pleasure and the pleasure of popcorn eating fat americans uh, thanks for that guys by the way it was pretty cool of you um and yeah king waspinator in the radio like did a big expose about uh, how michael bay was actually really a clone of dr arkham uh, dr arkham was this uh, mad scientist that worked at starscream in the 1980s and uh, starscream was real into cloning later on he had made several clones of himself and one of the clones he made was of Dr. Arkham, and he was named Michael Bay, and he was raised up to make really shitty, manipulative movies that people would go see because they're designed by marketers and written by marketers and have manipulative, uh, pop culture-hungry casting, just taking hot names from Ethan Coen brother movies and stuff like that. And uh, he, was, he was the perfect, the perfect pawn to just totally wipe out most of Transformers kind. And thankfully his damnable films are over. Uh, Bumblebee, which is coming out soon, at least is not being directed by Michael Bay, even though it is a movie about Bumblebee. Uh, that asshole. Well, anyway though, uh, after that, Waspinator uh, kind of didn't really know what to do anymore. Uh, King Waspinator Radio uh, got folded in and bought out by Omega Supreme Burritos. And uh, so I decided to come back to Earth and uh, take a job as a host here on the Fandom Collective 1138. So, uh, hi everybody. Anyway, right, uh, that, that's what's up with me. I uh, hope, hope you have a good evening or, or morning or uh, like, afternoon. You know, whatever time of day it is when you see this. And uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe for uh, more fantastic, great content every day. Just like at least. Uh, Hot Rod, are you gonna turn off the camera? Any Oh, uh, hey everybody, uh, it's your old pal Waspinator, uh, just, just uh, wanted to check in and make sure everyone's having a happy and safe for 4th of July here in the American Empire. Um, you might be hearing some things in the next few days about uh, how Waspinator was uh, paid off by the studios to keep his mouth shut about the whole Michael Bay thing. I, I, I'm just here to assure you that that is totally not true. Um, uh, you know, we just gonna take a little bit more time than we thought uh, to, uh, uh, you know, get uh, get the video put together. You know, there's so, so many notes. I mean, there's just there's a lot to say about these films. They're jam packed with, with information. It's all pretty awesome. Um, the, huh? The fuck? Uh, so yeah, totally, totally wasn't paid off. Um, uh, we do still have the contest. Uh, no, no one said anything about me not being able to do. I mean, yeah, never mind. Um, 
Anyway, uh, if we can get to uh, 100 subscribers, I will uh, totally execute the uh, traitorous collaborator Bumblebee, who uh, worked along Michael, Michael Bay, uh, you know, collaborating with the death of his uh, with his co-patriots and Autobots, just so he could, uh, you know, get, get a jazzy new uh, uh, car form and get to be in his own movie now, and, you know, like, uh, screw that asshole, you know. That, they even gave him Wasp and Nature's powers in, in the very last Transformers movies. I was the one back in Beast Wars who was always being blown up and put back together. And then all of a sudden, in this latest movie, Bumblebee's going around doing my shtick? Ah, I don't think so. So no, 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 no. Yeah, uh, if we can get to 100 subscribers, uh, I, will, I will put out a bounty and capture Bumblebee and have him brought here to the, uh, to the King Waspinator labs. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll execute him publicly for all to see. Yes. You, you know, you, you know you'd like to see that. Uh, so, you know, like, uh, share the videos and, uh, tell people about how, how awesome and cool King Waspinator is and 10 stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I guess I'm going to go to the bank now and, uh, I'm move some of this out of the way. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, well, cool. Uh, well, and a, a special thanks out to uh, a Paramount Pictures uh, for for being such for those really awesome fellows. Totally not intimidating with the security guards or anything. None of that happened. Uh, talk to you later. Hit like and subscribe. <sighs> what a day. Mike's Harder Lemonade is proud to present a Team Waspinator report. Now we go live to King Waspinator. Um, hello, hey everybody, it's your old pal Waspinator. Okay, well, um... Yes, yeah, so yesterday morning, uh, some executives and a security team from Paramount showed up at my uh, my uh, my lair and uh, threw a briefcase of money at me in exchange for my silence about the horrible, horrible war crimes of Michael Bay. And, uh, well, it was the 4th of July, and Waspinator is, a, is an immigrant to this planet and was wanting to get in the spirit of America. So uh, t taking a bunch of hush money to keep his trap shut Seemed like a pretty American thing to do, so I so I did it, and uh, well now now here we are. It's uh, after midnight on July fifth, and uh, I don't guess I don't really feel like I need to worry so much about doing the patriotic gestures anymore. 
So uh, we're going to talk about Michael Bay and all of his horrible crimes, and uh, Par Paramount can uh, suck my robot dick if they don't like it. So uh, here we go. Uh, we we, uh, we watched the whole five-part Transformers anthology saga, uh, quint Quintology. Uh, I don't know. The, the Transformers series of live-action movies. I saw them all on Sunday. I mean, it wasn't the first time I've seen them. It was the first time I've actually sat through all five in a row, though. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, took a bunch of notes. And uh, probably going to still need to break this up into a couple smaller bites. Because all of it at once, I, I don't really think anyone, anybody, even myself, really wants to sit through 40 minutes of Waspinator talking. So, um... Gonna break it up into little chunks. Uh, this one, we're gonna talk about the first two movies, Transformers and uh, Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Um, these ones are particularly um, distinguishable because uh, they they featured Megan Fox's character, Michaela. Uh, Shia LaBeouf as Sam Witwicky went on to also be in Transformers: Dark of the Moon, whereas Michaela took off after the second one, and we'll we'll get into that in a second. But uh, and. A lot of a lot of fans on the YouTube's whose videos I've seen all often cite the very first Transformers as being their second, uh, their being being their favorite. And uh, personally, uh, I actually kind of liked Revenge of the Fallen. Um, I know everyone hates that one the most. I I, I don't know why. Anyway, though, um, see uh, right right there we got Michaela from the first one. Oh, Megan Fox. I missed her. Uh, her, like none of the other uh, Transformer girls from the later movies really, really can hold a candle, candle to Michaela here. Uh, I, I noticed when you know when I had a page on Facebook several years ago, like a lot of the Transformer fans there seemed to have a, like a weird, begrudging thing about uh, Megan Fox, and I personally I don't get it. I mean, Raspinator was in his late twenties when the first Transformers movie came out, and. Oh, dear Lord, it's like she gave me a second puberty. I mean, just just look at her. She's she's a perfect human specimen. Uh, she, she's got beautiful, pert breasts that are just big enough that you can really get your hands around. I mean, she, she's got that nice waistline, and her, her skin's all really nice looking, and she's got that big, round, firm ass. Oh, man, I guess she's got a, she's got a pretty face, too, I guess, and all that's cool. And I, I'm sure she's... Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure she, she could drive a car and do basic math. I mean, it's not like we really need any of that. Anyway, so, like, yeah, Megan Fox has driven off the movies. Um, oh, my God. Mm. Mm. I, you know, I've, I've gotten kind of distracted. I, I think I need a moment by myself. Um, yeah. Oh. Camera's off, right? Good. Oh, yeah, Megan, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Megan Fox. Oh, Megan Fox, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, Megan Fox. Oh. Oh. Could it be that as fans, we just have unreasonable expectations for movies? Nah. 